So what's up, guys? Uh, a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me regarding the new GT350 Heritage Editions. That the package was released a couple of months ago. Believe it or not, it was like a total kick to myself of purchasing my Kona Blue GT350R uh, right before. It's like literally weeks before they actually announced this. So these photos here, these were most likely CGI uh, renderings that were released for press and media. Uh, and still to this day, there's really not a lot of information circulating on the web as far as actual photos of the car. But I actually will be showing you guys some photos today that a buddy of mine out in Arizona uh, went to the Barrett-Jackson Scottsdale last month and clipped some actual photos of a 350R Heritage Edition. So the situation with the Heritage, if you guys don't know what it is, basically it's a throwback to the color combination of the 1965 Shelby GT350 and 350R in Wimbledon white with Guardsman blue stripes. So on the Heritage Edition models, you're not getting the double stripe down the middle with the outline stripe, and you're also getting the side stripes along the bottom of the door and rocker panel and quarter panel, very similar to a 1965 Shelby GT350. Now they also did, uh, like I said, you're gonna have blue insignia emblems on the rear deck lid and on the front grill. Uh, you know, those things are pretty cool, but to be honest with you, when they released this package, uh, this has just been something that I have pretty much have wanted since 2015. Now, a lot of you guys don't know, in 2014, right before the S550 Mustang was released, they came out with a 50 years edition Mustang. Now, here I'm going to throw some photos of it in the video right here. So the 50 years edition came in two flavors. You had a Wimbledon white or you had a Kona blue. So how pretty, how ironic is that right now? I have a Kona blue and I, now I want a Wimbledon white. So what they did on the 50th edition, you had a Pony and Corral in the front grill. You had a 50th anniversary interior package. You have different alloy wheels and they had very unique uh, rear quarter windows that also looked pretty cool. And you know, a little bit of a throwback to the hashed um, vents on a 1965, 66 Mustang Fastback. So. You know, that was pretty cool. I don't really know how collectible those 50th anniversary editions were, to be honest with you, because, uh, you know, you look at them on the used market now, they were just a trim package, uh, you know, for a standard GT model, and it was done with the introduction of the S550 Mustang. Now, here are some photos here. Uh, this is some live footage from Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale. You could see they have a 65 continuation R model parked next to the 2020 GT350R. Uh, heritage edition model and you could just see you know the reminiscence of the two cars side by side you know the Wimbledon white the guardsman blue stripes you know hence the new uh, s550 platform you know on the on the R models you're gonna get the carbon fiber wheels you're not getting anything reminiscent to the magnesium rough cast torque thrust wheels that were on the original Shelby GT 350s and also you're you know you're getting the black trim on the door mirrors and of course the large rear spoiler now, the situation with this Heritage Edition pack is I've probably wasted hours calling dealerships all over the United States trying to get one. Now, the situation is this. They're only building 1,965 of these models, which is pretty cool. They're going to keep it rare. But a majority of those cars are going to be standard 350s, not 350Rs. So the situation that I'm finding out is a lot of the dealerships have an allocation for a GT350, but they do not have an allocation for a 350R, which means that I can't order a Heritage Edition. Now, all the dealerships that I've consulted all over the country, from the East Coast, Midwest, down South, Northeast, everywhere, it's the same situation. I can buy a Shelby 2020 GT350 Heritage Edition for about $68,000. There's no markup, there's no ADM on those cars. Now, on the dealerships that have the allocations for a 350R, the dealership markup, the minimum has been 10,000 and the highest has been 25,000. And if you guys watch my content, you know, I talk about this ADM crap all the time. I just don't recommend doing it unless it's one of those situations where you really have to have it and you have a way of offsetting the ADM to make money with the car. Like in my particular case, you know, I would build content with it. So I could probably absorb a small ADM, but I can't absorb 25,000. That's just over the top and I just wouldn't do it. So here, the situation is now with, with this, I really do like to get a 350R Heritage model. Now, I'm still negotiating with dealers. I know a lot of you guys order them. You guys are sending me your bill sheets and all of that. You're all excited. 
you know, if anybody out there has a dealer connection that is willing to give me a 350R allocation that I can order my own, I don't care where it is in the country. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much stuck with it because nobody in my area is going to be able to get one. Uh, I think I would order it. And if there's a small ADM, I would, you know, do it, but I'm not going to do 10,000, 15,000, 25,000 over sticker. I just don't think it's a smart financial decision. Uh, even though I think the heritage models are definitely going to be worth, you know, some money down in the long term. Now, another thing that has crossed in my mind is now I'm going to get a limited edition car, even more limited than the one that I currently have as far as production numbers. You know, do I drive it? Do I create the same kind of content? Do I do more show type of content? Do I do more detailing video content? I don't really know, uh, but to be honest with you, I just think it would be really cool as a purist and someone that has been around the vintage Mustang market for so many years, my entire adult life, I would personally love to have a 350R Heritage Edition. Now, the reason I'm so stuck on the R, it's not necessarily like I need the R. I mean, the cars are so close in terms of performance, but after owning my car for a number of months now and driving it in you know, my particular area, the carbon fiber wheels make a substantial difference on the sheer enjoyment of the car. It's not necessarily just the handling. Uh, it's just a reduction of NVH. It's the ride quality. Uh, there's just so many things that I will discuss in a separate video. I'm going to pull the carbon fiber wheels off my R and I'm going to talk about them and I'm going to show you a little bit about the characteristics and how they're manufactured and go into some detail on that. And that video is going to most likely be coming soon. So definitely stay tuned to the channel, uh, you know, to learn more about that. But here's where I'm at. Um, like I said, I would love to have one. I don't need one, but I would love to have one. Uh, that's pretty much where I'm at, you know, with the psychology of this whole situation. But uh, it also comes down to it. You know, I do love my Kona Blue GT350R. I'm having a lot of fun with it. You guys have followed me, you know, on Instagram and stuff. You see that I'm driving the car a lot more uh, considering that our winter has been so mild. But uh, now the situation is I don't want to put too many miles on it because there may be a situation where I'm going to be selling the Kona Blue 350R very soon. And that's the only way I'm pretty much going to commit to getting another one, a Heritage Edition. I have to sell the blue one. And here's the situation with Ford is telling me. Now, if I find a dealer and I give them a deposit and we, you know, we take the order and the order gets submitted to the Flat Rock assembly plant, that does not mean that the order is going to go in the system and the car is going to get built right away. They're telling me that it's going to get pulled up with a series of the other Heritage Edition models and they're going to do a specific production run of those cars. And I totally get it because of the paint. The chemistry is going to have to be changed over and there's probably going to be a couple other things along the assembly line that are going to have to be changed over to produce these series of cars. Now, so they're telling me if I put the order in uh, and I get the order in sometime, you know, February, March, that there's a good chance that the car could be built in June. Uh, some guys have told me it could be built in you know, August, September. So I don't really know. So the situation is I don't want to rack on four or 5,000 miles on my Kona Blue 350R. I'm already willing to give the car at a significant discount. If anybody out there wants this car, DM me. If you're serious, I'll put together a deal. There's still dealerships all over the country that are charging ADM over msrp on 350rs no matter what color it is uh it's it's still a hot car and it's still a significant car out there and there's no car in this segment anywhere in the world that is going to give you what this car does for the money as far as you know the carbon fiber wheels the 5.2 liter flat plane crank engine and everything that comes along with the package so it's still a desirable car and like i said compared to the competition that's out there with the american muscle car and sports cars that are on the market from chevy and dodge and all that you can kind of see where a lot of those other brands, you know, were charging those high ADMs. And now there's dealerships that have overstock of inventory and they just can't get rid of them. So that's pretty much where I'm at. So stay tuned for more automotive content. And there's going to be some more 350R videos as well. If any of you guys are interested in my Kona Blue 350R, that most likely will persuade me to go ahead and order the Heritage Edition. Like I said, I, I engage with five dealerships already to place the order of the 350R Heritage. I give them all my information over the phone along with the credit card for a, you know, a deposit and then I was going to wire the rest. And they all came back to me and says, yeah, we could order it for you. We have the allocation, but there's going to be a ridiculous ADM. And that's right, right there where I just squashed it right over the phone. I said, I'm just not really willing to do that. So if any of you guys out there have a connection with a Ford dealer, you know, I'm willing to wait. I'm in no rush. Uh, you know, my Corvette C8 order is like in total limbo with, you know, thousands of other people. 
Uh, and like I said, the rumor is, is that everybody's order is going to get pushed back to 2021 production. But I think what's going to happen with the C8, I most likely will uh, be picking up an earlier version of a car and paying a slight upcharge just because I'm so anxious to get my hands on it and create some content. So there's going to be a little bit of an open window. If I sell the Kona Blue R, then I'm going to have to have another cool toy to play with. Uh, I've also been looking at some Porsche GT4s uh, as another option because I would like to possibly get that car as a precursor for the mid-engine Corvette just to kind of compare and contrast and, and share my experiences owning these cars and driving these cars and kind of discuss the engineering aspects and the driving dynamics and everything. So stay tuned to the channel for more content. And like I said, this is just my little uh, glimpse of the 350 Heritage Editions. And like I said, the photos that I showed you, these are just the only ones that I could get. And I wanted to thank Drew out in Arizona for uh, taking them and sending them to me at the Barrett Jackson Scottsdale auctions a couple of weeks ago in Scottsdale, Arizona, because uh, like I said, when you go online, all you see are pretty much the CGI renderings of the model and seeing it up close and the way they staged it next to the OVC 1965 continuation 350R, that just sealed the deal for me. I was like, you know what? I really, really want this now. Uh, I just think it'll be totally cool and uh, definitely fun to share with you guys on the channel as well. So I'll see you guys soon. Uh, please subscribe to the Auto Fanatic channel and head over to the Auto Fanatic website. And I'll see you guys on the next video real soon. Mm -hmm.